here. Yes, we are. Okay, good evening, everybody, and welcome to our latest episode of the Tuesday Talk series, the No Bullshit, No Holes Barred show, where we bring an expert real estate investor to pick his or her brain and find out how they are so successful so we can replicate the same without all the issues. Today, I have the pleasure, I have the honor of uh, bringing on Liana Nisanova, who is the owner and founder of Home Flippers here in the GTA. She's a high-end flipper, I would say. I, I met I, before I met Liana. I actually saw her work, um, you know, on the Facebook, on Facebook, and all the social media. And I was like, "Wow, I'm in the flipping game, but my houses don't look so nice like this," you know. And of course, she's a lady, so definitely there's a lady's touch in that. And I think that is the secret sauce that all us guys flippers are missing. So it's really an honor and pleasure to bring a female flipper, a successful flipper, Liana. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for the invite. <laughs> yeah, I really, seriously, you know, before we actually met, I, I used to see your work and I'm like, wow, how, how, is she, how are these guys managing to do such beautiful homes, you know, within the budget? Because I could never do these little tweakings that you used to do, right? Or you do, and I'm, I'm sure you'll, you'll go over that. So, um, you know, uh, I really want to know how it's done. Uh, but before we get into, you know, the actual mistakes that you made where we can learn from, Tell us a little bit about yourself, about your company. How long have you been doing this? What's your goals for this year? Okay, so my name is Liana. As you introduced me, my company name is Home Flippers. Uh, we flip properties for about four years. Okay. Uh, flipped over ten in that time frame, we flipped over ten properties. Started doing it in Toronto, but now we're working outside of Toronto. Actually, presently we're doing Kitchen and Cambridge, but. Um, with my website, we get in leads anywhere. Today, I got the lead north of Barrie. So I'm going to look and see if the numbers work. So we started with Toronto, but slowly expanding outside of Toronto. Nice, nice. Okay, excellent. So you said 10 flips, and is that by choice or the fact that you work a full-time job? Or what's the reason that you're, you do you know, one at a time or maybe two at a time? I still work full-time. Okay. I do still. I'm in the healthcare and I was comfortable with doing one flip. There were times when we were doing two flips at the time. Uh, the biggest challenge is to find the numbers that work for me. So that's the biggest challenge. I wouldn't take the flip if I'm going to profit 20,000, 25,000. So I guess that's the reason why it takes much longer. And this year we were going to do much more, but the COVID hit us and it made the situation even worse. $25,000 profit on a flip, you know, times 10 flips a year, that's $250,000. I'll take that any day, any day I'll take that. <laughs> you know? I, so I, I don't want it to the quantity, I prefer to the quality. I like it, I love it, I love it. So what, what is that, what is that, if you don't mind me asking, what is that walkaway number you need to see? Is it 50,000, is it 100,000? What, what was that number? So it depends, if I flip just by myself, if no partners, I guess, 40,000 or around 40,000, uh, the least I would accept or I, would, I wish I would make. Okay. If I have a partners, then I have to make 80,000 or 75,000 at least, so it will be enough for two partners. Yeah, you got to cut off the pie into, into many pieces, right? Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, uh, guys, if you are watching live on Facebook, and you need to answer some questions, you know, drop it in the comment box. You know, I have my phone over here, so I'm following live. If anybody has any questions, we're gonna take that with expert flipper, Liana, so we can get, you know, from the streets, what should be done, what should not be done. I think Liana has a couple of slides that she wants to show us as well about her projects and about her, uh, her story, if you will. Um, so get ready for that. But if you have any questions or comments, then please drop it in the comment section below so we can get a live. This is your chance, guys. This is your chance. If you're just starting out and flipping and you always want to know, you know, is, there, is it complex? You, you've seen all the HGTV shows. People are making money. Leanna's talking about making 40 grand a project. You know, that sounds too good to be true. Well, it is because there are challenges and there are issues, but that's what we are here for. And we want to show you those so you don't make the same mistakes that, you know, Leanna did, or I'm still making, by the way, right? So, uh, you know, you can cut those corners and you can do it faster and quicker and cheaper and make more money. Okay, beautiful. Um, so, Leanna, you want to show us some presentation? Let's get into, let's get into, your, uh, into your slides there and, uh, you know, teach us, teach us. We are all ears. We want to, we want to see and we want to listen. I'm, I'm going to share today mostly uh, 
Let me see if you can see that. You can see it, right? Yes, perfect. Okay, so as per your, you, per your request, I'm going to share mistakes and challenges that we have. I mean, we, call, we all can talk about uh, successes, but, uh, and I cannot say those projects were failures. They are mostly were successes and 90%, but we had so many challenges and lessons along the way. Okay, this is project number three. It's in Toronto. And just to say, what's flipping? Flipping is a business. When you buy at a, such a price that when you sell, you profit. And the only way you profit if you can buy it at the right price. You make money on a purchase. Like this is rule number one for any investor. You do make money on a purchase, but it's even more important for the flipper because you have to sell it in a short time and there's no time for the appreciation. Yep. So this was the project number three. It was in 2017. It looks like the a worst condo. time to buy. Is it a condo? It's a, it's a condo, yeah. We, okay. we flipped the condos to begin with. Oh, so wow. we, we purchased in 2017, February, the worst time ever. And I wish I would listen what the Warren Buffett say when everybody is <laughs> greedy, be fearful. And I was so sick and tired of losing and giving offers and losing. And finally I got it. And obviously I got it only because I overpaid for that. So let me, let me just jump in over here because you, you are dropping gold bars. It's not even nuggets, it's gold bars you're dropping for people to pick up. Guys, if you're listening to this, you know, two things that Liana said, which I think is so important. I don't care if you're flipping or if you're buying and holding or anything in, in investing, right? In investing general, it doesn't even have to be real estate. The first is you make money on the buy. Liana said that you make money on the purchase. I think you write that down. Like you got a pen and paper, write that down because that is true to its word even today, right? Don't speculate. Don't buy and hope that there's appreciation. Those are speculators and those are the guys who fail. And when they fail, they fail big. Right? So if you're buying to make money, make sure that you get a good deal. How do you get a good deal? You got to negotiate or walk away, walk away. Don't overpay like Leanna did in this particular case. That's the first thing. The second thing is how do you know if you're overpaying or not, or if you're buying at the right time? She said it when everybody's greedy, flee, right? Go the other way. And when everybody else is running away, that's when you got to go greedy. And that's when you got to buy up stuff, right? Do the opposite of the the masses what people are doing because listen the richest and most successful people are less than one percent of the of the world population right they didn't get there because they're like everybody else like the rest of us if if they were like the rest of us they'd be in the same boat as us so whenever we go to something they're going somewhere else well i should say everybody else because we're, we are the successful people we are going when people are running away Okay, so those are two gold nuggets, two gold bars that Liana dropped in you. Write it on a piece of paper and let it sink in. All right, Liana, sorry to interrupt you there. Please, let's. let's no, it's okay. It's okay. On. So, what happened? We bought it in February 2017. And if you remember, in May, there were government intervention with the mortgages. Yes. And that was around the same time when we closed. And we were on time with completion renovation, but the problem is we completed in July, August. That was the time when prices, especially on condos, had drastically dropped. Yeah, you're talking so about the, uh, the um, what was it again? The uh, stress test, correct? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So making, uh, so, making it hard to qualify, yeah. So mistake number one, we overpaid. Mistake number two, we overpaid because we did our numbers on one comparable only. When you buy property, don't look at one comparable. So you have to look at least to three to four and don't look just on the comparables that was sold last week or two weeks ago because it was crazy time. And obviously everything was flying off like today on the market, people overpaid like hundred thousands. And I was depending, as you said, on one comparable and that's where the mistake happened. Another mistake here that was biggest mistake when you put the property on MLS, from my experience, I don't know about yours, the first offer is the best offer. And if you miss that offer, you lose it. So what happened, we put on MLS, we got an offer the next day, and if we would accept that offer, we would break even. Wow. And looking back, it would be a winner at that time. But again, like I was trying to make money, I was trying to be greedy, not realizing the market is going down the hill. I refused that offer and ended up sitting on the market for eight months. Ooh, not good for and a then, flipper. 
Not it's not for good for sleeping. anything, especially for sleeping, because it's vacant. You have to know the expenses on a daily basis. Can you, you have can to you, pay. Can you, for, for our listeners who are basically new to flipping, you know, uh, can you talk a little bit more about that? Why is it expensive to be sitting on the market? Okay, so there's a number of things. You have to pay for the mortgage. At that time, we were lucky enough, it was a lender. You have to pay for your maintenance, and the conduit can be quite expensive. If it's not maintenance, then it's utilities. You have to pay for your insurance, yeah. right? So, and it's not like just you're losing money. You could put that money somewhere else and make money. So I was stuck here uh, in total in 10, 10 months. And it was the only project, luckily, when we lost, and we lost a lot of money. So I'm starting with the worst scenario. We lost a lot of money, and it took us 10 months. It's almost crushed me, and I was going to give up, but thankfully, I just, you know, I said, it's not a failure, it's an expensive lesson. And, Ooh, if, you know, we had, and you had, we had conversation before, you asked me how come you, you're not buying, because I'm just being extremely careful these days. Yeah, no, beautiful. I love it. I love it because again, so so many things. I'm just trying to consolidate all the stuff that you say, that you you know said in, um, in my mind. So I think one important thing is that you gotta watch out for carrying costs, right? Because a lot of flippers they look at the high level numbers and they don't really go into the detail because during the time that you're actually doing the renovations or maybe sitting in the market, you still have to pay for your mortgage, your borrowing costs and so on and so forth. Utilities, as you say, right? Uh, property taxes, insurance, all this. There's carrying costs involved that keeps adding up. So the longer you're sitting on the market or the longer you're taking to do your renovations, these add up. So whatever profit, that 40,000 that maybe you were estimating in the start, basically, you know, it's sucking that out, right? It's sucking that out. So I think it's important that you keep that in mind um, when you do your calculations. I don't know if you want to get into this later, Liana, but you know, just a general, how do you do your calculations? How do you run your numbers before you decide whether you want to make a deal or not? Because I think this, this factor is important. I think that's, that's one of the big takeaways from this, from this lesson over here. There was something else. Uh, yeah, it was about comps. You mentioned about comps. Why did you have only one comp? Was it the realtor that didn't know what he was doing? Or again, you were just, you wanted to buy something quick because you were itching, you know, to get started in real estate investing. What was the reason? Can you talk us through that? Like, I don't, I don't want to blame a realtor because I, I, I don't like to blame anyone. I think whatever mistake we make, it's our mistake. Uh, but too um, nice. You're too nice. <laughs> no, but, 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 but I think that's the way it should be. It's, it's my lesson and, and I made mistakes and that's the way we learn, you know, as we grow. Um, they, there were a couple of comparables, but the highest, I, I looked at the highest sell that was sold for the exactly same unit two weeks before. I purchased this one. So it was the latest. And at that time, I still was a novice um, no. the, uh, investor or flipper. And, you know, there's, what the nov there's three mistakes that people make. First, when they overpay, they underestimate their, their cost. They no. underestimate their time. And they overestimate their knowledge and skills. So at that time, I overestimated my knowledge and skills. It was only my flip number three. And I overpaid. Obviously, I, you know, I was right on a, pri on, on, on a renovation cost, but I underestimated, you know, the, the ARV and everything. No, this is beautiful because this is the third thing that I wanted to mention, you know, which I'm taking away from this, this, this first project that you did, or not first project that you did, but the first project you're presenting is the fact that you got hit and you got hit hard, right? Like for most people, most normal people, they would just roll up in a ball and say, forget it, I'm done with this, right? I'm not going to do this again because it's not, forget about the money. The money will come and go always, always money will come and go. But the stress and the pressure that you go through during this phase, I can imagine was tremendous. You could have easily said in, 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 in your language, dasvidanya, right? To real estate investing, forget it, I'm out of here, goodbye, right? I'm out. But you picked up the pieces, and you said, I'm going to take this as a training and as a learning, and I'm going to carry on forward. That is super, super hard. Let me, I mean, can you, I don't want to bring back bad memories or anything, but if you can rewind the clock, was there a driving force behind you to do that? Was it your husband? Was it your colleagues? Was it your mentor? Did you have a coach? Like what made you say to yourself, you know what, I'm going to take this hit. I'm going to take this loss, but I'm going to continue. I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not a person who gives up easily. 
I'm not like I, you know, like, and if it's like, I'm not a failure. Like I, I really, I'm, I'm a fighter in the life and no matter what, I keep going. I say, you know what? It's, it was just expensive mistake. It was expensive lesson, mm -hmm. but oh boy, <laughs> like every time I buy now, I'm, I'm extremely careful. And my partner, the one who I have partner in kitchen in Cambridge, he, he keeps telling me you overestimate the renovation budget and you always underestimate the RV. I said, you know what? If we're happy with these numbers, everything is going to be cream of the cream. Yeah, yeah, like that kitchen. That kitchen looks beautiful. What's that, glossy cabinets? Oh my God. It was a high gloss kitchen, yeah. That's not cheap, eh? I, I love that, but it's not cheap. I want to do it, but I keep pulling myself back saying, no, it's a flip or it's a, it's a rental. You know, don't do it, Savio, but, uh, but I love it. Yeah, so guys, I mean, super, super important from, yeah. And maybe you're not that fighter, but I think it's important that you got to keep going. You got to keep going. And, you know, even if you take a loss, no problem, because at the end of the day, it's a volume game. You're talking about flipping. It's a volume game. Okay. I'm just going to go quickly to the questions and comments, Diana, if you don't mind. Uh, thank you for your time. Liana says, Nasir. Nasir is a good guy. He's a part, business partner of mine. Thank you for sharing mistakes. People don't talk about their mistakes. And that's exactly why we have an expert like Liana out here, because we want to teach you guys and give information about the truth about real estate investing, right? We don't want to show all the cotton candy and, uh, you know, stacks of bills like some guys do. And all these YouTube headlines that you see, you know, made $50,000 in my sleep. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's not happening. You got to make, you got to put in the work. If you don't put in the work, it's not happening. Okay. Um, Sunny. Hey, Sunny, how's it going? Sunny asks, question for Liana. Are you doing flips with your own cash, getting variable mortgages or using private money? I know. Yeah. All, 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 all of the above. <laughs> all of the above. Okay, great. Yeah. So there you go, Sunny. It's, it's everything, right? So wherever money comes from, why not? If the numbers work, I think that's the most important. Correct me if I'm wrong, Leanna. Yeah, I mean, I started with the A-lenders and now we switched to the private money. I started using my cash. Now we're using a lot of uh, OPM, other people money. Um, uh, I raise money, private money. I use the partner's money. So it's a combination of everything. Awesome. Do you, um, do you do any joint ventures or is it just uh, like interest sort of deals? No, I do. I do joint venture as well. Uh, on my last two properties, I have a partner who brought all the money for the down payment, renovation, the whole thing. Okay. And then you split the profits. Do you have, um, yeah. I, you know, I'm preempting this, uh, this question from somebody in the audience, but do you have any preference, whether it be a joint venture or like a, like, like a mortgage or kind of, you know, interest only payments? Uh, I mean, there's pros and cons in both. Um, I, I, I actually, I sometimes, it depends who's a joint venture partner. Mm. You know, if you get along well, it's actually, I think it's great. Yeah. Uh, so my money partner at the present time, he's totally silent. He does not get involved in anything. He doesn't, you know, he- The, like, the perfect like, partner. <laughs> perfect partner, he's happy what I'm doing. And he just, uh, we sold one property. He is my partner on this next one. So it depends. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think that's, that's a good point, you know, and I can talk from my experience as well is that basically when you start and, and you don't have the money, Sonny, this is, this is for you and for everybody else who's listening, you pretty much get the money from where it's coming from, right? You don't get to pick and choose until you're expert enough and, and people know what you do and you have a reputation and so on and so forth. Then it, it always gets easier to find the money, but, and then you can pick and choose to say, okay, I don't want to join venture on this. You know, I, I rather go for interest only payments. That's something that I moved towards uh, away from, I would say, when I started off, because that's, that's, what you, that's what you learn. You know, it's about joint venture, finding uh, joint ventures and you know, that's how you scale your business. But I look at it as like, okay, why do I need to give 50% or 60 or 70 or 10 or 20 or whatever it is, you know, of my pie to anybody, right? I rather borrow the money, pay an interest and get rid of that person afterwards when he gets his money back he's for sure going to come back for the next deal. But that's my, that's my personal opinion. Okay. Um, what else do we have? Nasir says tuition fee. <laughs> I think that was the last project that he showed. There was a tuition fee. I think I love that. That's excellent. Golden knowledge by Savio and Liana. Thank you. Thank you, Nasir. Okay. I moved to Windsor just to get coached by Savio. Love the energy. Thanks Kashif. <laughs> awesome. Come anytime. Give me a shout. Okay. Uh, all right, let's move on. Okay. So what, what's going on over here, Liana? Being on the market okay. for too long. 
Okay, so what happened this one? We actually purchased this at a great price. Uh, it was a luxury expensive condo, uh, 2,000 square foot. That was a huge condo unit. Um, we, the mistake we made here, when we put an MLS, we put it too high. The price, and, the price too high. Yeah, right? the price. So when, when, when you know, like the, mis like the lesson learned, you're trying to make the maximum profit. And again, I price it based on comparables, mm -hmm. but there was time shift again. You know how it's in a market, you know, like for two months it could be crazy and then it's, you know, it softens. So unfortunately we put in a market when the market softened and uh, it was priced too high for that time. And I, it took me four months to reduce the price. So what I do now, if it doesn't sell within a month, I reduce the price by 5% just to keep Ooh. going. Okay. Every month. Not every month. Uh, I mean, quite often when you reduce by 5%, it brings lots of attention. Okay. Or you, you cancel and repost it. It, it, it can bring, like people see it's a price reduction. It brings some attention to your property. Perfect. I was going to ask you, you know, how do you do that? So are you just reducing the price or are you taking it out of the listing and relisting it? So we reduce the price for a week and then we uh, cancel and repost it. That's what we do. Uh, we, we actually did well on this project. We still did very well on this project, but we could have done double on what we made. So, uh, sorry, let's, let's finish the, about, about real estate. Why do you wait for a week before you relist it? Or why do you relist it ever? Why didn't you just reduce the price and that's it? Uh, uh, some people, uh, when they search, they look for the new listings. Right. Okay, perfect. I think that's key. That's key important, right? So if you're trying to get rid of your property that's maybe not moving or taking a little bit longer, delisting it and relisting it shows up as a new listing, right? Versus, yeah. you know, just reducing the price, it shows up as a price reduction. First thing that goes into people's mind is price reduction, something's wrong with this house. You know, why are, yeah. they, why are they reducing the price? Or maybe nothing's wrong with the house. They know it's too expensive. I'm going to negotiate. Wait, go back, go back. I, I still, I'm in love with this kitchen. Don't go so fast. Oh my God. These kitchens, Rihanna, God damn, they look so beautiful. This is a house that I would live in. Wow. It's a condo actually. It's my house. It's 2000 square yeah, foot I, condo. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't mind moving back into a condo if it looks like this. Holy smokes. That is beautiful. Do you do all this design yourself or like, where does this come from? It's, it's me. It's all me. I, I like to design the properties and I stage myself as well. Really? Wow. Yeah. Do you do that for other, other clients, for everybody who's listening? <laughs> uh, I, no, but if someone wants to pick up my mind on design, I'm always happy to help. Oh yeah. yeah expect some calls from me now. I mean, look at that bathroom wall. I love it. It's that, that pattern on the wall. Like people hate wallpaper, right? But you made wallpaper look so luxury. No, it's, it's, it's a tile. It's not a wallpaper. It's a tile. Oh, yeah. Wow. So that uh, behind the mirror there is tile. Is a tile. Yeah, it's, it's, it's expense on oh, marble. I can't remember now. It's, it's been a couple years ago. Wow. I wanted to create that French look in this apartment. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's fabulous. It's fabulous. Uh, and this was in Toronto as well, or? It was in Toronto as well. Okay, and which, uh, which year, which month, do you remember? It was in 2019, actually. Last year we sold it. 2019. So, listen, I, I don't know if you have the numbers off the top of your head, but 2019, you're buying a 2,000 square foot condo in downtown Toronto area. You're it's not a downtown. It's not a downtown. It's okay. actually, it's North York, I guess. It's on Don Mills and Shepherd area. Okay. You know. Yeah. So what is it? A million and a half that you're buying this at? No, we purchased this. I knew you were going to ask me, so I, I had to refresh my mind. I wrote it somewhere. Now mm -hmm. I can't remember. We purchased it for 787 actually, and the same units were selling for 950. So we got it at a very good price. Wow. How the purchase price was good. The purchase price was good. We bought in a soft market and then went it up and then it went down again. Okay. So that's what happens for real estate. It's, it's hard to time. That's the reason why flipping the properties is not an easy business. Yeah, well, if you're, if you're so, okay, so you bought it for 7, 786, you said? 87. 787. What was your rehab uh, budget or your rental cost? The renovation was, uh, my budget was around 100,000. And I think we, we ended up around 95 or 100,000. We were right on spot here. That is excellent. Wow. So 
So let's say 787 plus 100, now you're at 887. What did you sell for? 1.1, uh, 1. 1. around 1.1. Smokes, there you go. So 1. We were so, but we were supposed to sell for 1.2. Well, listen, you made a pretty penny, okay? So stop complaining. <laughs> I think I think you did good. 1.1, you know, even if you, I, I want to say 10%, you know, in commissions, holding costs, lawyers fees, blah, blah, blah. Maybe that's, that's on a high side for sure. You know, you're still at 100. So you made about 120, 130 grand on this project. No, no, we didn't because uh, the maintenance was quite expensive. The maintenance here was close to 2,000 a month. So we, we made around 70,000, I believe. Okay, but still, yeah, so 70,000, that's, that's pretty good. Like, guys, if you've been listening to this conversation at the start and Liana said she walked away, it was not more than 40,000. I said, you know, 25 and I'm happy. Here's a perfect example. Last year, this is not even, you know, five years ago. This is last year. She made 70,000 on this condo. So but, but Savia, you cannot compare your market and my market, right? Uh, your purchase price probably around 100, 200,000 and I paid 800 for this property. So the, the risk is much higher here. So you, you, you have to make much more. And usually I, do, I don't like to make more than less percent of ARV. So we still made well, but it's not a success, like a success story because we made money. But again, like we were supposed to make over 100K on this project because the risks are much higher. You purchase at much higher prices. I, I, think, I think it's clear that you're a super achiever. And you want, uh, you know, the, the highest of the highest. And that's great because, you know, if you shoot for the stars, maybe you land on the moon and the moon is pretty damn far anyways, right? So, you know, I, 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 yeah, definitely. I love it. I think what's important, regardless of market, whether I'm in Windsor, whether you're in Toronto, and I know you're in Windsor as well, it's, it's, the, it's the numbers. You have to run the numbers, guys. Like if you don't run the numbers and you don't put enough meat on the bone when you run the numbers, you're going, to, you're going to get stuck with something that, you know, it could turn very rapidly upside down, correct? So yep. I think it, it doesn't matter which market you're on. You know, I'm sitting in Detroit right now. You're talking about buying houses at 200,000. I'm buying into 50,000 over here. So, you know, again, it's numbers. It's, it's, it's all numbers, right? It's, it's a game. So once you learn to run the numbers, I think it's important. Do you, um, okay, so this one, you still made a good chunk of change. It's just that you have to stay longer in the market to get the right price that you want, correct? Yeah, and, and as I said, the lesson, the lesson that was learned here, uh, we're talking about lessons and challenges that uh, don't overprice. And if it doesn't sell, don't wait for four months to reduce the price. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So there you go. That's a lesson. Reduce price fast if you want to move that thing fast, right? And especially if the maintenance cost is 2000 then you definitely don't want to sit on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. awesome. um, before you go to the next one, um, Liana, just a question over here. Kashif, Kashif asks, hey, Kashif, how's it going? He asks, how many deals have you refinanced and buy and hold versus flips? So I'm going to answer that question for you right now uh, on your behalf, Liana. Kashif, Liana is a flipper. That's what she does. She doesn't buy and hold, she flips, correct? No, no, I, I, do, I do have buy and hold oh. as well, obviously. Oh, I, I stand corrected. I mean, I, the Windsor properties buy and hold. And actually I'm going to show a couple of examples on buy and holds of the challenges and mistakes that investor can make, not just the flipper. Okay, beauty. Let's let's go. Okay, this one. So, in the flipping, especially in the flipping, time is money. Time is money, and when you go to municipality, you have to know how long it will take to get the permits in that particular city. So, this property that's that's the project that we have on the go now. We purchased it before COVID, and we thought the permits will take us two months. And it took us seven months to get the permits. You can blame COVID as much as you want, but what I learned that Cambridge is one of the worst city to deal with. I know St. Catharines as well yeah. to get the permits. So you really have to know, and you have to calculate ahead of time in order to know how much it will cost you to hold the property and maybe do the short term rental or do whatever. If I knew I would just rent it for six months or seven months. I wish I knew that. So it took us seven months to get the permits. It takes us almost a month now to get disconnect, electricity and the gas. Everything takes forever. They blame COVID, but at the same time, doesn't matter what it is, it takes away from the profit. So let's, let's jump into the, I think this is the perfect timing to jump into this, uh, Liana. When you run the numbers of your flip, is there some kind of high level formula that you use 
that you know you 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 calculate like how much um, uh, you know, how much renos that you need to put into this. What's your ARV? Like how do you know whether you should buy this deal or not? Okay, my formula is very simple. Probably too simple for most of the people. I go backwards. I look, yeah, I I look at ARV. I look at the ARV. For example, if the ARV is five hundred, and I want to make fifty thousand, so it's ten percent. Then I calculate ten percent for the holding periods and closing cost and realtors. So another, it's usually I end up around fifty, like ten percent of ARV. That's where it ends up usually. And then I subtract the renovation cost. So if the renovation will cost you 30,000, then you can only pay 370 for the property. Okay. Are you confused? Yeah, no, 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 no. So, so, so very, uh, even more simple, I wanna say is you take your ARV, yeah, your after rehab value, you mm -hmm. minus the profit because that's what you're doing this for, right? You minus your holding cost, which is 10%. Of the ARV, and then you minus whatever your renovation uh, budget is, right? Cost, so, yeah. And that's your maximum allowable offer. That's how much you would offer on this house, or you hope yeah. to buy it for. Yeah, and and when when I go with the RV uh, now, as I as as you probably learned about me now, I don't look at one comparable. I look at five, six comparables, and I take average and more to the lower end. For example, if the ARV is five, uh, 450 to 550, I would, I, I'm, I'm landing around 500. I want to be careful with my ARV here. And, and so you should. And the, so the other question is now in this particular case where you had um, a, an unseen for a circumstance where, you know, COVID came and you're sitting on the, you're sitting doing nothing for seven months. Do you put some kind of contingency fund in there or, or not really, or maybe now you're- No, we always have contingency fund you always have and i'm going to talk about that as well today yes. um but no matter how much contingency funds you have I, you know what the budget still can go outside of that contingency fund yeah for sure for sure so like in this particular give us the numbers what did you buy this for i i believe we bought it for 500 actually 500 now you're sitting seven months basically you're paying property taxes you're paying mortgage borrowing costs or whatever uh, and uh, what was your estimated or you hoped to get? This is a flip, correct? This is not totally flip. We're going to add the second floor and we're going to do some extension to this property. This is not, this is my biggest uh, flip ever. I wouldn't do it if I wouldn't have a second working partner who actually built the house before. So that's the only reason why I'm doing it. Um, okay. but, but at the end of the day, you're going to flip this. That's the idea. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. But, but, but what I was trying to say, it's not a regular flip. It's not just a cosmetic renovation. It's a huge project. Yeah, yeah. So you're blowing off the roof and you're adding a second level and so on and so forth, right? Yeah. Um, and adding the garage to, to, to the right side of this property. Like it's going to be the garage here. Yeah. So I would assume that the, the, the budget is quite big for this one. So, you know, the seven, yeah. seven months is eaten up in that budget already. So you got to save yeah. somewhere else. The, the budget is big here. We were, we were hoping we're going to, we were optimistic with what we're going to get within two months of permits and four to five months to build the property. It took us seven months already just to get the permits. It's taken us another month to get disconnected. And now we're getting into the winter. All I'm hoping now is to start doing grounds before the frost is here. And yeah. let's see, I mean, the profit here, it's should be quite large and we'll see you know look we live in such a crazy times now nothing can be predicted i have no idea what the market is going to be in the spring but this is the expensive project and it's a big it's going to be a beautiful house we'll see i'll well, share with you the numbers what the market's going to be in spring because you know we just got the immigration canada has just released their forecast for the next three years and it's it's phenomenal you know what, what are you talking about average four hundred and forty one thousand new immigrants every year for the next five years, right? To make up for the loss of immigration this year. So the population is still gonna come. These people are still gonna wanna have houses or people you know, who have houses wanna upgrade or move out and so on and so forth to you know, uh, these tertiary, tertiary cities like Cambridge, like Windsor and so on and so forth. So I think the demand is going to be there. The, the, the supply as we all know is low. So high demand, low supply, 
price is going up. So all, all the best to you, um, uh, Liana. I'm, I'm predicting that you're going to make a home run on this one, for sure, for sure. But uh, I wanted to ask you, so obviously in this particular case, you're, you're getting permits because you're blowing off the roof, you're adding a second level, you're doing an extensive project. Usually when you do your, um, your cosmetic rehabs, what we call cosmetic, but if you're moving, let's say a bathroom or you're creating a new bathroom, uh, for this sort of stuff, are you getting permits or you feel yes. that? No, you, we, we do. We get a permit for that, yeah. Okay, okay, that's cool. Uh, I only ask is because, you know, we, I had this conversation just recently with, with, a, with another investor and, you know, he was talking about cutting corners and trying to do stuff without getting permits because it takes time as your case proves. And plus you have to get, you know, um, um, uh, licensed trades, which is more expensive, so on and so forth. And I tell him, don't cut corners because yeah. one day it will come you will get caught and when you get caught you're going to get such a hit on your profit that it's going to scar you for life right and it's happened to me yeah. and uh I, and i get permits for everything these days but so anyways but then you know the offset is that okay you gotta pay some more or you gotta wait some time but perfect okay this looks beautiful what is this wow this looks like yeah. a that's the property that we sold actually in the summer it's the property in kitchener and um again as i said time is money with this property um lesson learned try not to close property around the christmas time yeah. if you can so we close it at the middle of december and people close don't like to purchase. work close we, we, we close we close we purchased in november the closing was just a week before the christmas time wow. okay. the, the worst, don't ever close that at that time because trades don't like to work at that time. They either on vacation and they want to have a family time. So it took us almost three weeks just to start renovation. Mm -hmm. Everything was planned. Everything was going well. Again, COVID hit us and we could not have more than one trade at the time in the house. And there was such a huge shortage of materials and it was like pulling the teeth, getting the materials. So instead of completing the project in March, we completed this project in May. There was delay of two months. And because it was already spring, we, we had to do so much more work. We have to do the work on a swimming pool. We have to do lawn care. So it did cost us a little bit more than we expected. And instead of selling within six months, it took us eight months from closing to closing. But it's, it was quite a successful project nonetheless. The only lesson here is try not to close around Christmas time and always expect unexpected. In this case, it was a COVID. No, this is beautiful. Like, I mean, um, a beautiful story in the sense of like, who would think about this, right? I mean, if you find a good deal, you want to close on that deal regardless, right? If the numbers work, you never think about oh my God, there's a pool in the back. And if my project runs a couple of months later, I got to open this damn thing up and I got to clean it or, and maybe repair it. I don't know if you had any repairs, but you got to repair it. You got to service it because that's going to become a selling feature for the house. But if it's in a bad situation or bad condition, oh my God, right? Yeah. I made that mistake when I bought my house in Windsor, my primary residence, there was a pool in there. He had a brand new cover on the pool. And I was like, oh, this is, looks beautiful. But it was in the middle of winter. We closed in May, I think. And he said, listen, I'm not going to open the pool in May because, you know, you guys are moving in. You do that. I'm, I don't care. I was like, yeah, sure, whatever, right? We moved in June. We closed in May. We moved in June from Oakville, opened up the pool, and we found that it was in a terrible condition. There was holes in the liner. You know, there was no stairs, da -de da We ended up paying $10,000 just to fix up the pool so we can use it that summer. And it took so long to do the work that we actually had, I think, a couple of weeks of using the pool. But, you know, so you never think about that. For you, it's like, okay, the numbers look good. The project is available. Let me close this deal. So I, I love the fact that, you know, this is something that you got to think about. Christmas time, make sure you check everything, guys. It's not just in the house, but it's external as well, right? Things that you can access because it's, it's too cold or whatever and things are closed up. When you open them up, you better be sure that it's in good condition. Otherwise, you're spending some more money. All right, cool, cool. Where is this, uh, Liana? Where's this house? It, it was in Kitchener. In Kitchener. So now we talked about Toronto, Kitchener, Cambridge. You said you're going to Barry. I know you have a house in Windsor, but let's 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 talk. What's this? Okay. Okay. So uh, lesson. Um, 
lesson for the new uh, investors, uh, nothing went wrong with this house. It actually was quite, went well. We, we, the timeline here was four months only from closing to closing. Nice. Uh, the lesson for the new investors, try not to over innovate and you, you know, you really have to know who's your buyer. And you, it's so easy to over innovate and overspend when you try to create a wow factor but you have to create that wow factor maybe by staging. So luckily, uh, I have a partner who was actually uh, flipping the properties. It's, 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 this is in Cambridge as well. So I was going to do so much more and he was the one who actually stopped me. Instead of hardwood floor, we use the vinyl floor, we use the carpet on the basement and in the bedroom. And you know what? It did not affect the sell price at all because the buyers expected those type of finishes. So you really have to know who's your buyer and to finish the property according to your buyer. No, again, beautiful, beautiful lesson because I'm looking at this house. I mean, the finished product over here compared to what it was before, it looks goddamn beautiful like it is. So I didn't, for me, it's not all over renovated or I don't know what you had more in mind than this. Like what were you gonna do different? You said put, put laminate in the, or not laminate, but hardwood instead of vinyl in the, in the basement as well. I, uh, in the, like in the bedrooms, I would put hardwood floors. I, I would put tiles in the kitchen. I would, uh, usually I use much nicer kitchen cabinets. This was the home depot, uh, cabinet. I use better, um, make up for the appliances. This was, was cheaper appliances, but you know what? It didn't matter. The buyers were extremely happy. We sold it within a day. And as I said, it was four months closing to closing. Beautiful. How much, how much do you think you would have saved by not over renovating? I did not over renovate this one. I and did not. If you did what you were going to do, like what you wanted to do, how much? Um, I probably could spend another 15,000. So that's 15K straight to your pocket. Yeah. Like, you know, I probably would do more work outside, but again, yeah. I would I would do more high end bathrooms and we did not do it. It was cheaper styles and it did work. It still looked beautiful because as I said, you can cover up and make it look much nicer with beautiful staging. And, and as long as it's clean and looks nice and that's what people you have to know how what's the top dollar you can sell the house. You have to look at the comparables and look at the finishes in that particular area before you start renovation. I, you know, I, I, I see it all the time, um, uh, Liana, that when people do renovations, they do the renovations with the mindset of, would I live in this house? Or is this something I that, know. right? And I think that's yeah. probably a big mistake because you are basically taking money off the table and you're spending it into something that basically, you know, you're never going to get back. You got to understand that the flipping is a full-time game, right? It's a full-time job in a sense. You gotta, it's volumes. You gotta do one, go to the next one, do one, go to the next one. The moment you have an emotional tie to the house, that's when it's going to cost you money, right? So I, I, I love the fact, don't, don't over anyway. Before we go to the next one, uh, Liana, let me just go through the questions and comments over here. Um, I live five minutes away from Don Mills and Shepherd, good area. Go and do a flip in there, Sonny, if you can, if you can find something. Well, condo prices are coming down because of, you know, Airbnb and COVID and so on and so forth. So maybe you can find a good deal. Vienna, maybe you're going to find a good deal, a new condo. No? No, I, I wouldn't flip the condo in today's market. I Why? Why? Let's ask the question. As you, said, as you said, the price is coming down. They're not selling so well. Oh, because of the ARV. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> good point. Um, do you also do, uh, Kashif asks, thanks, Liana. Do you also do duplex conversions as a part of your flip in Windsor? I haven't done any, no. That's me, guy. <laughs> if you want duplex conversions, I'm your guy. Uh, I, I don't know if you're going to talk about your Windsor property, but we'll leave it for that. We got a people watching. <clears throat> Nasir asks, is there any specific market you pick for flip? Um, I prefer within an hour and a half from GTA driving. And again, as long as the numbers work, as long as there is a profit. And the reason one and a half uh, hours, uh, Liana, is because you're, you're basically GCing it yourself. Right. Yes, I try to GC myself I, I, or if I find a great second working partner, then I could consider it. Okay, yeah, yeah, good, good, good point. 
And and you know if you're if you're planning to get into this game and learn this this industry about flipping, you got to do it yourself, guys. I, I mean, I I know there are some successful investors who do it remotely. I think it's very very hard to do. Okay. Uh, again, for those of you who don't know, I'm sitting right now in Detroit, right? And I'm here because I got projects over here. And no matter how much I've done, if I'm not here, these projects are not going to move, right? So so you gotta you gotta get your hands dirty and do it yourself. Try and stay within your uh, radius that you can access easily, at least for the first couple of months before you expand out and trust somebody else to take on that project. That's the basic truth. Okay. Um, great finishing, spend money in staging. That's an excellent point. You know, spend the money on staging. Um, Sunny asks, where do you order your kitchen cabinets from? Uh, sometimes we buy from Ikea, but we also have the guy who is located in Markham here in GTA and He's my cabinet maker most of the time. Okay, so IKEA and uh, basically custom kitchen. Yeah. Uh, there you go. yeah. Okay. Cool. Hope that answers your question, Sunny. Okay, let's talk about excuse me, contingency fund. What is this? This looks like a multifamily. Yes, it's actually sixplex, purpose-built sixplex in St. John's in New Brunswick. This is buy and hold or burr, I should say. Um, I only shared. I only shared this one. Wow, you're all over the place, Liana. <laughs> I know, I know. Not all over, but yes, I have one property there. We purchased it last year when we traveled. I, I was not going to, but I just liked the property and the numbers were working so well. Uh, um, I purchased it with my first GV partner for buy and hold, so okay. quite happy. So talking about contingency fund, no matter what you do, burr or flip, you always have to have contingency fund because the renovation most of the time go over the budget and goes over the time. So with this property, when we purchased, inspector report did say that this fire exit staircase needs to be repaired. Mm -hmm. And we thought five to 10,000 would be the most to repair the fire exit staircase. So guess what? When we got the quotes, uh, the um, companies came back and said, it's in such a bad condition. Uh, it's, you know, it's high risk and we have to build a new uh, fire exit staircases. So instead of five, 10,000, the quote was 30,000. Wow. And when they actually uh, removed the staircase, they found out that everything behind, not everything, but behind this wall, behind the siding, the wood was all rotten. Mm. And we have to redo, you know, we have to refinish the whole siding, remove the siding, redo the wall and put its siding back. So instead of 10,000, it cost us 40,000. Yeah. It's still going to work out. This property appreciated greatly because, um, you know, the cap rate has changed so much. It, it, you know, we turn around from cash negative to cash positive. And when we want to refinance, we're probably going to pull out all our money out of here. But nonetheless, the lesson to any investors, always, always have contingency fund because you never know what can be what kind of surprises you can get. Yeah, I mean, uh, good topic to, to uh, explore a little bit further, you know, when you talk about, because this is a particular buy and hold. And one thing about real estate investing is that mistakes are corrected over time very quickly, real estate investing, right? If you're, if you're buying and holding versus flipping, right? If this was a flip, then you gotta take that hit and hopefully you get it on the, on the, on the sale price, but highly unlikely, right? In, in a buy and hold situation, this mistake is corrected over time. Uh, my question to you, Deanna, in your buy and holds, when you talk about contingency fund, is there every month out of your rent roll, do you keep aside some certain money to say, okay, this is now adding to my contingency fund, or you just take it as, as it comes when your furnace blows out or your air, air conditioning goes or whatever? No, actually, we did not touch any cash flow on this property for the year. It's going to be a year, actually, in November since we purchased it. Mm -hmm. uh, we did renovate three units out of six. We did a common area. We installed the intercom system. We actually installed, uh, this is the initial picture. We installed the heat pumps here. Mm -hmm. We uh, built a new staircase here. We are going to change this um, doors to the basement. Mm -hmm. to prevent the heat escape in the winter. So we did spend a lot of money on this property. Uh, initial budget was around 80,000. We're going to be in around 110, 120. Mm -hmm. And we still have to, have to do a couple more units, but tenants, there are long 
long-term tenants who are not moving, who are paying well, uh, and we just put on them the electricity. So they're going to pay for the utilities as opposed to be all inclusive. Right. Yeah, so again, um, going back to my, well, two things. The three units that you actually up, uh, renovated, did you get uh, higher rents once you renovated? You went to market rents? Were they below market before? Yeah. So what happened when we purchased this, for example, this two bedroom was rented for 700 all inclusive. Hmm. Uh, now we rented it for 900 plus utilities. Okay, perfect. So you made it, you're, you're making at least additional three, 400 bucks from before. Okay, and then- uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm making more than that because when we purchased electricity, it's a panel electricity in the unit. And when we purchased electrical bill for the first three months was around 1800 a month. Holy smoke, okay. Well, but, but six units, right? So we're talking about 300 bucks a unit. Yeah. So you, yeah, yeah. So when, when yeah. you renovated and you, you went to market price, you're making about additional $500, which is, which is good for for per unit which you know is, is a lot so again then going back to the contingency what i was asking is uh obviously you renovate you're spending money on renovations i'm saying let's say it stabilizes now right so you've done all your renovations you've got tenants in there so on and so forth when you get the rent roll every month do you put some money aside and say i want a contingency fund or you just you just go as you go so with this partner, we decided we're not going to take any money out. We're just going to keep it and collect at, uh, on our mutual account. And we're going to buy another property probably. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to, to keep it there. There's no need for the cash calls here. We just want to keep it there. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's an excellent strategy, right? And then when you, when you actually have an issue, then you have that money available. Until then, you can show the income to purchase your next property. So yeah, I love it. I guess it depends who is your GB partner and what's the agreement is here. So I, uh, this one, issues with the funding. <laughs> um, lessons, never close on Friday, don't close on Monday, and don't close before the long weekend. You know what, I just, I, it's funny you say that because um, when I was young, okay, and sorry, we're going off on a tangent here, but when I was young, I was buying my first car. And you know, as a young guy, you're getting a car it's like the biggest thing in your life, right? And the weekend was coming and there were so many issues with this car to get to actually close on this deal. And um, it was coming to Friday and my mom, she stopped me. She said, don't take this car on Friday. Don't take this car on Friday. It'll be the biggest mistake you did, right? Of course, you think I listened to my mom. I was 17 years old, right? I went and bought this car. I took it out of the showroom on Friday. I came out and the first thing I hit was the speed bump and the car was a low car and the whole front bumper just fell apart, you know? And my mom, I went home and I was crying, literally crying and my mom said, oh, yeah. so. and since then, Liara, you won't believe, I would never do, it's like a jinx for me. I would never do any kind of deal or anything important in my life on the weekend. You know, I always say, leave it till next week in the middle of the week. So tell me why, why you are saying this. This is, this is, it's a funny story, yeah. Because, because if the deal doesn't close, then you do have the, like you, you don't end up on the weekend. So what happened with this property, it was my um, uh, prop, it, it was in Kitchener as well. Uh, we got a lender commitment. We got instructions sent to my lawyer. We were supposed to close on Tuesday, but the appraisal came back on Thursday saying this, this property is not rentable. Oh it's it's in a really bad condition. It wasn't really bad condition. I mean, it has a green carpet. It had some water damage in the walls, but it was not rentable. Obviously, we we had to renovate it, and Scotia Bank refused mortgage on Friday, so we ended up Saturday, Sunday, and Monday before the closing. But don't ask what I went through. I was crying. I didn't know what I'm going to do. I mean, I could use my HELOC to buy this property, but obviously I did not want and do double closings. Luckily, my son, who is a mortgage broker, managed to get me the private money and we closed, delayed by only two days. We paid a small penalty to the sellers. Mm -hmm. So the lesson learned, always have extra day or two so you can figure out what you're going to do. And uh, always have a backup private money if the house is really in bad condition or just go with private money because it's so much less stress to close the property. 
Yeah, and then you can refi it later, right? No, I yeah, totally, totally agree. I, you can refi if you if you want to do buy and hold or you or you just sell it. This one was the flip, right? I did not have to refi. I just have to sell the property. Yeah, yeah. I, I can I can't imagine what you must have been going through on Friday afternoon. Yeah, but, it was stressful. That, that next, was uh, next one. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I just want to finish on that one. I mean, also, if you talk about when you sell as well, right? And this is why I never close, even if I'm selling a property on, on the on Friday, because you're not going to see the money till Monday anyways. By the time you close, they close like late on a Friday. Banks are closed. You're not going to pick up your check till the next day, your, your draft till the next day. By the time you deposit that, they're going to put a hold on it. You're going to see the money on Monday, earliest maybe Tuesday, right? So I, I don't ever do it. Don't like, just trust me. Lawyers will always push to close on, on a Friday. I never do it. I say Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, maximum. All right. Mm -hmm. So good, good point. Uh, Diana, I love it. Cool. Next one. Sorry. You said, uh, going back on that one, you said your son found you uh, a private lender for that deal. Right. So he just went to his boss and they, their meek actually funded the property. It did cost me, I ended up paying couple percent more than I wish I could but listen closing private mortgage within four days it was good deal at the end we yeah. profited well it's worked right sorry the numbers worked the, the, the number worked we like I, as I said I only lost on one project so far I hope it, I will never yeah. lose again uh, you just learn, you just learn, like, I, I don't go to the bank anymore. If I see the property that is in bad condition, I just go straight to the private lender, make my life easier. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Right. Okay. So trades, uh, contractors can make you or can break you easily. This is actually my first project. First one. <laughs> and, um, I had no idea what I was doing. I did not want to hire the contractor. I wanted to manage myself. I, I had no idea how to hire the trades. Um, make sure when you hire the trades, make sure they, they, they will be able to handle the size of the project. First of all, listen to what they say and listen to what they don't say. Quite often the people will speak too highly about themselves, they could be far away from who, who they are. Uh, ask for the references, get a few quotes before you hire someone. Um, I mean, the problem we had here, the guy who was doing the Italian job just disappeared and he took the keys away. Yeah, by the way, always have the lockbox at your project. So, you know, all the trades put the keys back and you don't have to hunt for your keys and look, you know, where it disappeared. So, yeah, so main lesson, make sure you have the right people. And when you find the right people, treat them as a gold. <laughs> Try to keep them coming back to your project over and over. Yeah, so uh, a couple of things over here. I mean, first of all, I mean, kudos to you. You're saying you didn't find the right trades and this guy screwed you. But I'm looking at these pictures. God, again, they look gorgeous. So obviously somebody did the job. So <laughs> great job they did. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing you said, he took the keys. What do you mean he took the keys? So you didn't have keys? No. So, so, so we had one key and he was working, uh, he was doing the backsplash, I believe, and he still had to finish the tiling job in the bathroom. I had no idea, but this guy was addicted to the alcohol. He was alcoholic. So I guess it was the time for him to party. It took us almost four to five days to locate him. Don't, don't ask me how we managed to get our keys back. And then I had to find for another guy to finish the tiling job. I mean, this it was my first project. It was very successful. It took us four months close to close. We did very well on this project as well, but there were lots of lessons. The main lesson on this one was how to manage the project. Another thing, trades don't like female. They don't like female management. They prefer to work with males. And obviously it was me who was managing them. And build professional, respectful relation from beginning. I am a... I'm a pleaser. I like to please the people. I'm trying to be too nice and I'm still doing it, unfortunately. But sometimes you just have to build that professional relationship and just business-like. But okay, so I, I was, you know, I wanted to close actually our discussion with this being, with you being a, a female um, um, a lady in a flipping business. And I wanted to know the challenges, but you brought this up right now. You know, on one side, you said that basically they don't like females managing them uh, but you are, you're, you're a pleaser. So what was his problem? Okay. I know he was alcoholic, but you know, what, what is the challenge? Do you feel, why do you feel that trades don't 
Uh, generally, like not this particular guy, but generally, mm -hmm. you know, like in construction, it's a male world. They don't like when a woman comes and tell them what to do and tell them, you know, fix it. I don't like the way it works. I'm quite a picky person. I used to be a picky person anyway, not anymore now in my projects. I let a little bit things go here, there. I, I learned it doesn't have to be 150%. You know, like it has to look good, it has to be safe, it has to be clean, but it doesn't have to be perfect. So it's not something easy uh, to give up, but I'm giving up on that. And at the beginning, I was quite picky and they didn't like it. They didn't like when I would make them to remake it, to, to repaint, to redo the wall, to redo the floors. So it, it was, it's, it's, it's not an easy to be female in a man's world, I should say. Any any tricks to our ladies who are listening? Because you're a successful flipper, there's no doubt about it. You've learned the hard way. You know, you're doing, you're learning through doing. And a lot of, I would think, a lot of ladies are sitting on the fence, or they've seen all these things that are happening, and they want to get into it. HGTV is full of female flippers, right, who are very successful, but they're scared because of exactly the same thing that you're talking about. Any kind of advice can you give them to say, okay, you know, if you can do it, anybody can do it, right? I mean, the main advice here is to build a respectful relationship right from the beginning. You know, like, like they have to know, like, they, you're well, not the a pushover. They have to know you're who not, the boss is. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to say boss, but they have to learn that you're not a pushover. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's excellent. That's excellent. And I think, again, as a woman in the trade, you have a vision that probably a lot of other guys don't have, right? And, and you know, men and women just see things differently. And that's why I feel you're so, your homes are beautiful. But for a tradesman or for a handyman to actually deliver on that, usually contractors don't have that vision, correct? So I think bringing that vision to them is probably the biggest challenge that you might face. But you gotta stand by your guns and you gotta be firm and you gotta make them do what you want because you're the boss at the end of the day, you're paying that money. So kudos to you on yeah. that. So this is the last last one I'm going to share. Uh, stress and anxiety. I mean, generally, being an investor, we have so many ups and downs. It's it's a daily grind we go through. We have so many stresses in our life. Uh, this one actually in Windsor. That's why I left it to the last because it's probably more you know something you can relate to. Uh, this is buy and hold. It's a student rental. We bought it uh, in 2018. Uh, sight and seen. Uh, this project was the most stressful project I ever had in my life. What do you think it's, about Windsor? Come on. It was the most stressful. So lesson where's, learned. Uh, um, Liana, where's the project? Can you tell us which neighborhood? Sandwich? It's, 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 it's in Sandwich Town. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the lesson learned, there are always, as we know already from my previous examples, there are so many unexpected surprises. And if you cannot handle the stress and bad news, then flipping is not for you for sure. <laughs> because there is always stress, there is always bad news. So this one is not actually a flip. As I said, it's a bird project. Um, so owned. I don't have any GV partners on this one. I bought this property site and scene. Uh, my general contractor at that time told me it only requires cosmetic renovation. We have to do kitchen, bathroom, and main building. Like, I mean, just you know, to update the whole property inside. Mm -hmm. The initial quote was 80000 as I said, I had no idea where even Windsor was on the map before I purchased this property. I never was on a Windsor. So after the closing, I drew all the way to the property. And first thing I saw that the roof was in a bad condition and the windows were in a bad shape. So that was my first question to my contractor at the time. I said, like, the roof needs to be changed. He said, yeah, you don't have to do it at the time, but it has to be changed. He did not know about me that I don't like to do things halfway through. If I do it, I do it to the perfection almost. So anyway, how much to change the roof can cost you? 10, 15 grand? 7,000, 10,000, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it had three layers of shingles and everything underneath the shingles was rotten. Oh, so just the roof cost me 22,000. Ouch. But but this is not the worst part. The worst part was when I entered the house, I saw the floor was sinking in the middle here. And when I questioned that, he told me it's, you know, there's a crawl space. We just have to jack up the floor. He told me extra 10,000. So the numbers were actually multi, like adding up already, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm used to 
adding up the numbers, but I do not expect what happens next. This is how the house looked uh, two weeks after we after the closing or we started renovation. So what happened, every single wall inside the house of the main, the main building was built of the brick. So we had to demolish the whole house. You're saying interior walls. Interior walls were made out of yes, brick. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. So, you, so you, see, you see lots of brick here. This is not even quarter of what was there. And then obviously once you demolish the house, you have to apply for the permit. This is not a cosmetic renovation anymore. And it took us four months to get the permit. Wow, I've never heard of that. Interior walls made out of brick. I know nobody heard, so I cannot blame anyone. You know, like I, like as I said, I don't like to blame anyone. Nobody could expect it. Even if I would hire the inspector, inspector would say yes, the roof needs to be, you know, changed. The inspector would say yes. Uh, I mean, you have to redo the floor, but there is no way inspector would know that the walls were built out of brick, and there is no way he would know that we have to rebuild the whole roof. So, oh, that's. I said that's the last one, but that's not the last one. So the lesson learned, contingency fund wouldn't save me. Uh, my renovation budget tripled here. Wow. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I'm sorry, Vince, had to do that to you, but, uh, but you said this is a hole. So I, ho I hope the appreciation that you've seen in the last year, in the last six months have actually, you know, hopefully uh, helped you in that. It did. It did. It, it's appraised very well, actually. It, it appraised very well and it's cash flows perfectly well so i'm very happy with my property but what i'm trying to say you just have to be uh you have to be able to go through all the difficulties uh, and hope that everything will work out because there are there are so many unexpected surprises you, you have con no control about that i could probably save a little bit if i would manage myself but i have to pay to contractor to manage it and it took much longer than expected but it's a, it's a beautiful property. I, I'm happy to have it in my portfolio. Excellent, excellent. Is it tenanted now? I mean, you said student rental. What's it is student rental. Yes, it is tenanted. We have only one room vacancy. Okay, and it's a, what is it? Four, five, six, seven bedroom? Seven bedrooms. Seven bedrooms, wow. Okay, and only one vacant. Okay, awesome. Hey, listen, Liana, I mean, we've been talking a lot. We can go on and on. And I, you know, you and I, we love to talk about real estate investing like a lot of people listening to the show, but we got to cut it off because we're over time now. Um, I'm just going to take one or two questions before we go. Uh, Nasir asks for a newbie in flip moving from buy and hold. Oh, okay. He was a buy and hold guy. Now he wants to move to flipping. What type of property would he recommend to start with? Is there any kind of property or just numbers? What? So, something he can handle. If he cannot handle, then I would say uh, partner with someone who knows what they're doing. There you go, Nasir. You got to be thick skinned as, uh, as uh, Liana has shown in her, in her slides over here, but I know you personally, I know you have thick skin, so I think you can do it. Just go out there and start doing it, man. Uh, just another question over here from, from who, from who, from who? There was something over here. I missed that. It was about, okay. It was from Paul, Paul Tan Tanhill asked, Tanhill asked, what do you pay your private lenders? It depends. It depends, you know, if it's uh, secured and secured, it depends on loan to value. There's so many variables there. I'll answer the question, anything they goddamn want, <laughs> I'll pay, <laughs> right? If the numbers look good for me in my project and I need the money, I'll pay. It's as simple as that. Whoever comes first and I can get my project done by now and renovate and keep it or sell it or flip it or whatever, then wait, you know, in the future because we don't know what's happening in the future. I mean, I pulled some stats. Liana, Liana and I were having a quick discussion about this before we started about material costs. We're talking about flipping, right? What happened in one year? Look here, two by fours. Okay, October 2019, I paid $2.68 for a two by four for one stick. Okay, October 2020, one year later, I'm paying $6.35, triple the price. We talk about OSB, so subfloor, right? Four by eights by seven sixteenths. 1069 a sheet in 2019. 29.89 right now for a sheet of OSB. That's freaking three times the price. It's nuts. Drywall, screws, like you name it, everything's going up in price, right? So whatever that lender wants as a fee or whatever, if it gets me to my project and do it now, I'd rather do it now because that money's valued more today than it would be in a couple of years. Okay. And on that note, I think we got to wrap it up, Liana. 
thank you so much for sharing the complications and the, I don't want to say failures, but the lessons learned in flipping because it makes you stronger. It makes your, th your skin thicker. It allows you to be successful as Liana is and has been all this time. I wish you the best of luck in your projects, Liana. I want to bring you back on so we can follow up and see, you know, where you Thank are. You. And if you're taking up more and any more nuggets, gold bars, not nuggets, gold bars that you can drop on us anytime, you're always welcome on the show. Okay. Thank uh, you. Yeah. And if if somebody needs my help, reach out. I'm always happy to help. If you guys have a question, just private um, text me and I'll be happy to help. Listen, if you, if you don't mind, can you put your, um, your contact information, like your website, your email or something on the comments of the, of Facebook, or I can do that later. Uh, so, you know, if somebody wants to see your work or they want to go to your website or contact you, they can, they can do that. Um, so, you know, you guys, if you're starting off in flipping, you need some advice or you have a design that you want to get some critique on, Liana's the lady for you. All right. Uh, it's great to see a lady coming out and flipping. And, you know, we want to show my audience that, listen, it's not only guys who are doing this, it's ladies who are doing this. You know, if you have a mission and a goal and you have the uh, energy to do something, it'll always come to you, all right? And on that note, I want to say good night to everybody. Thank you so much for coming on. Stay tuned in the next couple of weeks. We're going to have great shows. So uh, week after next, you know, we do this every two weeks. Week after next, we're going to be doing our Windsor Market Update once again um, using uh, October numbers, right? So we're in November. We're going to have the October numbers out. We want to see where we are. So come and join us for that. We have... Uh, another lady flipper who is super successful. Everybody knows her in the GTA. Uh, we got to get her thoughts on, on flipping. That's uh, Christine. Um, and then uh, what else? We have Austin Ye coming out for all you Toronto peeps. You know, all you young guys out there who follow, uh, who follow Austin. We got to bring him on a show. He invests heavily in Windsor. We're going to get his thoughts on how he invests from afar and how does he manage projects from afar. So, you know, really successful guy there and it just keeps going and going. So if you haven't signed up or if your buddies haven't signed up, send them the link, let them join the group. It's all free guys. And this is where you're going to get your knowledge and your information. So until then, stay apart, stay safe. Thank you, Leanna. Have a good night. Bye.